All right, gang, here we go into a new computer animation tutorial. And what we'll be trying to do today is to create a breath animation. And what uh, this animation will do is just we'll review some basic tween techniques to make a shape fade in and fade out and expand and go from small to big. And we'll adjust the timing so that that timing um, lines up with a correct four count breath. So you breathe in and then breathe out and exhale for the full four count. And so we'll go over how to adjust the frame rate and make sure that you have the right timing for that to line up with a good breath. All right, so uh, to start this project, we'll go to our wickeditor.com site. I'm going to create new. Uh, first thing that you may notice is that I had this stage reformatted for a square size. So let's click on our editor settings up here. First, I'll give my project a name, breath, or breathe. And then the next thing I can do is choose a background color. Maybe I'll go with kind of a peachy orange. And the next thing we'll do here is adjust the size. So I will make this 480 by 480, so it'll be a square. And then notice our frame rate is 12, so 12 frames per second. So in order to create a four second animation, we would need to make it 48 frames long. But first thing we'll do here is we'll type our title. And our title will be breathe with the shape. That is what we are trying to get our viewers to do is to breathe with the shape. So I'll just line up this text centered uh, using my arrow tool to move it. And I'll choose a different font from the side over here. Scroll down through and see if you can find something that seems calm. Maybe not something so bold, but something maybe that fits with the idea of breathing. I thought this kind of like a cursive almost a script type font fits well. Um, we can adjust our colors here. We can adjust a fill color. So maybe I'll try out like a purple and you could give your text outline colors too if you want. Sometimes that can be a little bit distracting though. So um, if you don't want to have an outline color, you don't have to. And you would just turn this weight to zero if you wanted to turn off the outlines. But I'll leave that on. I think it was fine. All right, and I think this is lined up pretty centrally. And so the next thing we'll do is create a layer two, and this is where we'll put our shape. So on this shape layer, first I could click on this layer two where it says that right here, and I could name this layer shape. Sometimes it's nice to have so that I know what's on which layer is by naming them here. And we'll make a new frame and stretch this frame all the way out to 48. Oops, looked like it got stuck there. So I'll scroll over and make the last bit to 48. All right, so now I just need to draw my shape. And the other, I would drag this layer too. Let's drag the text all the way over to 48 as well. We'll end up having to move them all the way over to 56, but for there is good for now. Now I need to draw my shape so we can take the brush tool and before I had used the shape of a heart, you could do any shape that you want. I could change my fill color for my brush tool here. And I'll go with another heart. A heart shape, or I think I had some vines coming off of it. Um, the other thing we'll review here really quickly is your path cursor tool. So you can use your path cursor tool to kind of like expand or change the shape of a shape. With a brush, it's going to pull from the points on the edges. And so that may not be very useful here. But if I were to have done this with a pencil line, where maybe I'll add a little more detail. Oops, let's undo that. Command Z, and I'm going to change my line weight to four and my pencil color here to maybe something that fits more with my color scheme. And just adding a little more detail. So with that pencil line, I can take my path cursor tool, and if these points didn't end up in the right spot, I could move them around or adjust them or put it over a curve, and I could bend that curve in a different way if I wanted to make adjustments to my shape. 
So that's a nice feature that we can use in Wick Editor as well. So now I just want to add a tween to my shape. So add this add tween button with the diamond here. That puts my starting point in. I'll go all the way down to where I have 48 and I'll hit this diamond button again. Now when I'm over this frame with my selection frame selector here, I'm going to take this shape and expand it so that it fills up my space here. All right, and that will create this animation of getting bigger. So that is your inhale breath for a four count, right? And now I'll just take this and extend it even more. So just sliding my mouse over and I want it to go all the way to 86. And then I'll put in another diamond here at the end. And then I'll be able to shrink it back down. The other thing I'm going to do is take my text layer and just drag that all the way down too so that the text layer stays visible this whole time. So now with this last frame here, I'll click on my shape again. I'm going to hold the shift key and drag to shrink this smaller because that will maintain the proportions. And then I'll put it back down in the center like I had it before. So if I play this now and we try and breathe with the shape, we breathe in and breathe out with the shape. So the last thing that I wanted to show you is how to make this shape fade. So we can make it fade in and out. Um, if I want to make this shape transparent here to start, I will just click on the shape, turn down the opacity from the inspector over here, and then hit play. Hit preview play because that confirms, that sets your transparency back in. I'll make it fade out as well so that this makes a good loop. And I would just click here on this next diamond point, or actually the last diamond point, the middle one will stay fine. And I'll go to the end diamond point, click on the shape again, and lower that transparency. And then hit preview play because that locks in your transparency. If you don't hit preview, it might not lock in the transparency you wanted. All right, and there goes my animation. The last little thing you could possibly add in as well as easing. Easing will just make your animation, your tween go a little bit smoother. Actually, what I will do with this is probably want it to ease out. So in the middle, it will get a little bit slower. So like a pause in the middle of the breath. And then I'll put an ease in on this second diamond actually. So this last one will be an ease in. So let's give that one more preview play. So that should kind of make it so it speeds up a little when it's small and then it kind of slows down in the middle and then kind of closes back down. And there you have it. So obviously you could take a little more time to get more detail into your shape, make this more elaborate. I did a pretty quick one for my example, but this would be all set. I could save my WIC file. That way I could come back to this and make edits and adjustments. Or I'll also click export and export as a GIF. And then we can use that file, upload it to anywhere you want to upload or send it as a message uh, for someone to breathe with the shape. All right, I hope you guys have fun and got creative with your own breathing animations.